Welcome to our episode of the China Briefing, where today we dive into the swirling currents of China's economic shifts, cultural controversies, and its robust stride into the electric vehicle market. Let's kick things off with a look at the commodities market, where Bloomberg has spotlighted a significant pivot in China's economic focus. Iron ore prices have been reset to around $100 a ton, marking a strategic move towards renewable energy and advanced technology. Meanwhile, the entertainment world is abuzz with the Netflix adaptation of Three Body Problem, igniting debates over cultural representation and the complexities of China's relationship with the West. And in the automotive scene, Xiaomi's electric vehicle, the SU7, has zoomed into the spotlight with nearly 90,000 orders in just 24 hours, challenging giants like Tesla. Shifting gears, we explore the changing tides of global investments, where the mantra by India, sell China is being reconsidered. Thanks to China's economic recovery and policy-driven revival, investors are now looking eastward again. But it's not all smooth sailing, Joseph Nye weighs in on China's soft power dynamics, suggesting that despite its efforts, China's charm offensive has seen limited success. And as the US-China relationship teeters on the edge of unpredictability, especially with the looming US elections, the global community watches closely. Meanwhile, China's property sector faces turbulence, with China Bank's shares taking a dive, signaling deeper economic challenges. Diving deeper, we explore China's influence in Southeast Asia beyond official state actions, where non-state actors, from expats to organized criminals, play critical roles. As China's economic and cultural ties with Southeast Asia grow, so do the challenges, including environmental concerns and the shadow of Chinese organized crime. Amidst these dynamics, the Philippines is gearing up for joint naval patrols with Japan and the US, a strategic move to counter China's assertive presence in the South China Sea. This complex tapestry of economic shifts, cultural debates, and geopolitical maneuvers paints a picture of a China at the crossroads of tradition and innovation, power and partnership. Stay tuned for more details on these unfolding stories. In a fascinating turn of events, the fluctuating dynamics of China's economy and its global cultural influence have been making headlines across various sectors, from the commodities market to the entertainment industry and the burgeoning electric vehicle EV, sector. Starting with the commodities market, Bloomberg has reported a significant shift in China's economic focus, as evidenced by the reset of iron ore prices to around $100 a ton. This price adjustment is not just a mere fluctuation, it heralds a pivotal shift towards China's new economy, which is leaning heavily on renewable energy and advanced technology, moving away from traditional heavy industries. The ongoing property crisis in China, despite showing signs of recovery in other sectors, has contributed to this decline in iron ore prices. The future of iron ore demand is now under scrutiny, with predictions of a continued downward trend, suggesting a recalibration of China's economic priorities. In the realm of entertainment and cultural representation, Bloomberg also sheds light on the controversy surrounding the Netflix adaptation of Liu Cixin's sci-fi novel Three Body Problem. This series has become a hotbed of debate, showcasing China's complex relationship with the West. The depiction of sensitive historical periods, such as the Cultural Revolution, has sparked outrage among some Chinese ultranationalists, who argue that Western studios cannot accurately or respectfully tell Chinese stories. Despite the ban in China, the series has piqued global interest, igniting discussions about China's history and its perception in the international community. This controversy underscores the challenges faced by creators in producing content that critically explores China's past and present. Meanwhile, in the technology and automotive sectors, Xiaomi Corporation has made a splash with its foray into the electric vehicle market. Bloomberg reports a surge in Xiaomi's shares by 15% following the overwhelming response to its first EV, the SU7, which received nearly 90,000 orders within the first 24 hours of sales. This impressive debut positions Xiaomi's EV as a formidable contender in China's premium EV sedan market, potentially rivaling Tesla's Model 3. Analysts from Goldman Sachs have even projected orders for Xiaomi's EV to reach 100,000 this year, signaling a promising start for the tech giant's venture into the automotive industry. 
These developments across different sectors highlight the ongoing transformation within China's economy and its cultural landscape. From the shift towards a new economic model prioritizing sustainability and technology, to the contentious debates over cultural representation and the rise of Chinese companies in the global EV market, China's influence on the world stage continues to evolve in complex and intriguing ways. In the ever-evolving landscape of global investments, a notable shift is occurring as investors pivot from their previous Buy India, Sell China stance, Bloomberg reports. This change of heart is spurred by China's economic recovery, supported by Beijing's policies aimed at bolstering industrial profit and manufacturing. Firms like Lazard Asset Management, Manalife Investment Management, and Candrium Belgium are leading the charge, reallocating their investments towards China, citing stretched valuations and regulatory cautions in India. Despite this, India's allure remains strong for the coming decade, but China's policy-driven revival is too compelling for investors to ignore. Meanwhile, the South China Morning Post sheds light on China's soft power dynamics, as observed by scholar Joseph Nye. Despite China's rich cultural heritage and economic triumphs, its efforts to charm other nations, especially in Asia, Europe, North America, and Australia, have seen limited success. Nye points to China's regional conflicts and stringent party control as significant barriers. However, he suggests that China could enhance its global standing by cooperating on global issues like climate change and public health, benefiting both China and the international community. Nye also delves into the complex US-China relationship, highlighting the importance of high-level contact and cooperative endeavors. He predicts that the trajectory of US-China policy might not change significantly if Joe Biden is re-elected. However, a Donald Trump victory could introduce unpredictability, heightening the risk of trade wars and armed conflict. Nye underscores the persistent danger of armed conflict, potentially exacerbated under Trump's isolationist tendencies. On the economic front, Nye is cautious about China's future growth, citing the middle-income trap, a declining population, and waning factory productivity as potential stumbling blocks. He challenges the notion that China will eclipse the US in GDP size by 2030 and doubts China's capacity to upend the post-war world order dominated by the US, especially in terms of replacing the dollar as the key reserve currency. In a more specific financial development, Bloomberg reports on China Bank, a leading property developer, facing unprecedented challenges. The company received its first sell rating from Wall Street brokerages, courtesy of J.P. Morgan Chase analysts, who flagged concerns over liquidity pressure and diminishing profits. This cautionary stance was underscored by Vank's decision to abstain from paying dividends, contributing to a 12% plunge in its Hong Kong shares to a record low. This development signals mounting pressures within China's property sector, reflecting broader economic challenges. Together, these narratives from Bloomberg and the South China Morning Post offer a multifaceted view of the shifting economic and geopolitical landscapes involving China and India. Investors are recalibrating their strategies in response to China's economic resurgence, while China's soft power and international relations undergo scrutiny and recalibration. Amidst these dynamics, companies like China Bank are navigating turbulent waters, highlighting the complex interplay of policy, investment, and economic development on the global stage. In an enlightening piece by the diplomat, Enz Han, an associate professor at the University of Hong Kong, unravels the complex and multifaceted nature of China's influence in Southeast Asia, far beyond the realms of official state actions. Han's exploration into this topic reveals a tapestry woven with the threads of non-state actors ranging from experts and immigrants to private business people and organized criminals all playing pivotal roles in shaping the region's dynamics. Notably, Han delves into the significant impact of Chinese migrants, who, seeing China as a burgeoning economy and a formidable power, tend to align more closely with the interests of the Chinese state. Moreover, he sheds light on the burgeoning demand within China's consumer market, especially for agricultural products from Southeast Asia, though not without cautioning against potential environmental repercussions such as land degradation. Adding another layer to the intricate relationship between China and Southeast Asia, 
and discusses the challenges posed by Chinese organized crime networks. These networks, thriving in the somewhat fragmented and under-policed landscapes of certain Southeast Asian nations, have prompted both concern and action from the Chinese government and regional authorities alike. Despite these issues, Han argues that China does not seek to export its political model but rather maintains a principle of non-interference, showing a willingness to collaborate with both democratic and authoritarian governments alike. In a related development, as reported by The Diplomat, the Philippines is gearing up for a strategic move to counter China's assertive maneuvers in the South China Sea. In a bid to safeguard its territorial claims and respond to the increasing frequency and intensity of Chinese incursions, the Philippines is set to embark on joint naval patrols with Japan and the US. This trilateral effort, to be officially announced at a summit in April, signifies a deepening of security ties among the three nations, aimed at addressing the escalating tensions in the disputed waters of the South China Sea. This initiative underscores the growing need for regional cooperation and collective security measures in face of the challenges posed by China's expansive ambitions in the region. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6DO team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6DO brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6DO team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6DO brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6DO brief via email.